Okay, good morning, and Thursday is here. Um, today is 16th of February 2023. Now, we have some, um, a little bit about uh, 15 minutes to go or so. Uh, we are continuing our assembly program and our morning show program. This is Pen TV, it's all about Jesus. And so, between now and then, we are here to do, uh, engage and do a lot of discussions as well. And make sure that if you have also contribution, you bring it up so that we all will look at it in trying to shape our world with our perspective, our country, our continent, and to make the world a better place to live. My name is J.B. Damuka. Thank you so much. Now, we have an issue to discuss this morning. We want to understand. Wait a minute. Like, what you see on our continent today in Africa is very interesting. And this morning, we want to get certain explanation to some of the events, things that are happening all over. It is factual that if you want to look at the continents where Christianity is booming, it's Africa. Where we have our population, we have the youngest population, is Africa. But if you want to look at the continent that's somehow lagging behind in terms of development, trying to raise the bar over the poverty line is Africa. Our spiritual inclination is very high, and yet we don't have the corresponding effect to our living. And so this morning we want to seek explanations. We are just delving into some of the issues and find out how do you explain this. And as always, Elder Doctor Adam Edu He's a tax audit and management consultant of the Morrison and Morrison Associates. Partner. He's a partner, senior partner to Morrison and Associates. So today, uh, Doc is here. Uh, those of you, I mean, anytime he comes here, it's very interesting and, 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 and enlightening, actually. And so we want to find out how does he explain some of these issues to us. And I have a preamble that I want to read so that we can get into our today's discussion. So uh, this is an engagement from a Ghanaian called Amekudi who happened to have traveled to the Switzerland in 2008. And I'm, I'm, I'm just reading the things he saw on the land. And then we can try to tease our understanding whether there's something that we have to learn as Ghanaians and for that matter, people coming from this continent. And if we can still move above where we are now or we are destined to stay where we are. So this is a, a man who has gotten to Switzerland in 2008 from Ghana. And this is what he captured. Now I want to read to your hearing. 2018. 2018. Now he said, when I landed in Switzerland, I searched for signs of Christianity. I did not find large billboard announcing life-changing programs with pictures of prophets. I did not find Swiss TV preachers sharing gospel on Sunday or any other day. I did not find Swiss radio preachers proclaiming the word, the word on radio as I was used to. Here, here in, in, the, in, in Ghana. I did not find Swiss mega churches with huge congregation. I did not find Swiss general overseers of large charismatic churches, pictures everywhere. I did not find people dressed in their most splendid outfit and heading to church on Sundays. I did not hear, God bless you, at the end of every sentence. So I decided to change the location of my search. So I'm still continuing. Now, this is what the man came up with out of his search through the understanding of what he saw on the shores of Switzerland in 2018. He said, I found the values of Christianity living in most of the Swiss people. I found most Swiss people keeping to their word. I found most Swiss people orderly 
and decent and as a result creating, creating out of the most orderly and decent countries in Europe. I found high level of safety and security generally as many sought to do the right thing and police those who did the wrong thing. I found out that the best expression of Christianity in our lifestyle as human and not in the physical things we do around. So, this is the preamble. Somebody who has gone to another country, to be precise, in Europe. So, you have to travel and then probably get there. So, he is used to a certain practice of where he was coming from, and precisely uh, our, our own country. He got there, and the story was different. So he was just asking questions and trying to find out what are the issues. So we want to find out whether we can also grab something and get it less sense out of some of the things uh, Amekudi made in Switzerland. And the kind of mindset he had earlier and the shift that is producing results there. And then we want to compare it to our country, where we come from, and for that matter, this continent. Whether there are some lessons that we can learn or we can still stay where we are and get a resource. My guest, Elder Doctor, Adom Edu Amwa. Doc, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. You had me read the observations of a uh, Amikudi. Yes. A Ghanaian who has probably traveled to the Europe. Yep. Switzerland to be precise. And the kind of observations he made when he got to that place and here. As an initial remarks, what I mean the observations he made coming from where he moved from what do you make of those observations as your initial remarks? Well, as somebody moving from Ghana, mm -hmm. if he was religious, he might be going to church, a big auditorium, and uh, we have pastors that are, I seem to be very powerful. But when he went there, he didn't see billboards. He didn't see big auditorium. But he saw Christianity in the lifestyles of the people. This is what I take from it. We are outward, big billboards, big auditorium. We dress and go to church. We pray for long hours. We pay our tithes and offering. But after that, what next? Is Christ being seen in our lives? The way we do things? No. So we are highly religious by less righteous. That's what I want to see. So let me bring it back to the main questions that we want to find answers to this morning. So this is a man coming from an African continent and moving to the Europe, another continent. Precisely Ghana, Switzerland. These two countries are all Christians, are serving God. But if you listen to their conversations and the way he was trying to put it, what he saw, the transformation there is quite different from here. Now, somebody wants to ask for your explanation that is God that we serve in Africa different from that of Europe? <laughs> the God that we serve in Africa is no different from the God that we serve. We have one God. I mean, the Bible talks about one God uh, who is expressed in three ways. God the Father, God the Son. We have the one God. But you see, let us get the principle very well. God has given us the responsibility to reign on this earth. So we are responsible for determining the quality of life. It is not God. But we have always been made to think that it's God who determines our life. No. The second issue is that the major problem, the differences is that we are looking at the the universe, the whole world, differently. The people 
from Europe, they look at the world differently. And Africa also looks differently. And now we say into we say our worldview. The major issue is our worldview. The way we look at the world. If you want me to explain further, the Europeans look at the world differently. The spectacles with which they look at the world is different from our spectacles. And when your spectacles are not good, you see differently and you make wrong decisions and then you have wrong outcomes. So that is it. But I mean, tracing Christianity, how Christianity got into this country, we knew that there were missionaries from Europe who came and propagated the gospel here. Yeah. And so in terms of Christianity, if you are saying that there's the same God, why would the same God and the, and the kind of message that was brought to us from the Europe be different or be diluted from how you see it in Europe? You know, when the missionaries came, African had a worldview. The missionary came with a worldview. African had a worldview. And the worldview was different from that of the missionaries. Missionaries have also gone through a lot and they have changed their worldview. Back, when Christians started, everybody was mystically minded. We look at the world from superstitious. Everything is caused by spiritual forces. But with time, as man interacts with nature, you reveal that kind of view that you have. Africa hasn't done this. So when the missionaries came, they propagated the gospel. But meanwhile, we had our worldview already. But we didn't allow the worldview the gospel to affect our worldview. So that's the challenge that we have. So the theologians will say that they see that the missionaries planted did not plant well. So you realize that every African, typical one, we live in two worlds. We have what we do in church and we have what we do outside church. They are two different ways. But tell us the worldview of Europeans, how it started and where they are now with their Christianity. All right. What actually what that everybody was superstitious. Everybody thinks that everything is caused by spiritual forces. That's how the whole thing started. And because of that, uh, if there's any problem, you go to the church. Or you, that time, you have only Roman Catholic church. Or you go to Malam. Or you go to the spiritual, church spiritualist. So when you look at the history, you realize that all the Europeans, they have gods. Even the names that we have in a day, they are all names of gods. The Sunday is the name of God. Saturday is the name of God, uh, uh, the planet Satan. You know, all the names have God. Wednesday, the name of the warrior God, Woody. You know, it's a man God. But with time, when they began to understand nature, they revealed... At, at what point their, did they go to, in their time, to understand nature? What happened before they, they begin to... You know, give him to you know, progressively, you know, God reveals himself to us progressively. Mm. So around 1500s, people said, no. What the church is telling us is not true. Because the church says that if you are sick, it is caused by spiritual forces. If you have a good harvest, it is caused by spiritual forces. It is not true. For example, even in uh, the UK, could you imagine that in 1523, a law was passed in the UK parliament a law was passed in the UK Parliament that every witch should be killed. Every witch should be killed. And it was signed by King Henry VIII. What's the reason? If you go to do your farm and you don't have good produce, output, it means it was caused by a witch. If you are sick, it was caused by a witch. Do you know how they define a witch? A witch is an old lady who lives alone with a black hat. Really? So they killed and they appointed one called uh, Thomas Hopkins as a chief witch hunter general. And he was paid. <laughs> he was chief witch, witch hunter, hunter general. general. He was paid 12 shillings a year. So they go from village to village to arrest witches. They killed a lot of people. Because they still didn't understand that whenever you go to farm, 
and then you, they see that you plant on a farm. The soil is no good. You don't actually handle the horticultural activities on there very well. You have good at all. But it, everything was blamed on witches. Can you imagine? So they were thinking like us. Then be, some philosophers are thinkers. Who to a country who doesn't have what? Thinkers. Who to a country or a church or organization that doesn't have what? Thinkers. Those days we call them philosophers. They are the warriors of the mind. They, philo means that they love. Phi means what? Wisdom. They love wisdom. So they began to ask questions. And when they began to ask questions, said, no, it is not true. Then they began to say, no, there is a natural cause to all these problems that we are having. But it's not spiritual. The church say, hey, you are taking our powers away. So the church began to what? Fight them. Meanwhile, all this, some of these were clergymen. They are also members of the church. So from that level, that he started asking questions. Even that was some of the things that led Martin Luther to start the revolution. And then Thomas Bacon and other people came in, came in, and then they developed a system to be able to assess nature to know its laws. That is the beginning of the asking question. Then what about sickness? Why do people fall sick? You know, the church says that you have sinned. Then in 1413, 14, there was a sickness called Black uh, Plague. It killed a lot of people, including the pastors, to the extent that... First plague that came around, yes. We don't even have pastors. Then the people ask questions. Why is it that pastors who wear quite clothes are yeah, also what? They are also dying. Also dying. Then that was the beginning. So people ask questions. So if you are not asking enough questions, it means you are short-living God. Continue to ask what? Question. Thank God that one of the universities attended, the motto is never stop action. So as they were doing this, they were able to come out. And then suddenly all the mysteries, most of the mysteries, they were able to sort it out. This affected the Roman Catholic Church, had a reformation came, and then we have the Protestants. The Protestants, they reviewed their theology. They reviewed their theology. And one of them is that God that we are serving is rational. And he has uh, created a world that is orderly. And if we are able to set for the order in the universe, we can be able to know how things function. And when problems come, we can be able to what? Solve them. So that is how they went on. So when these missionaries came, they came to preach the gospel. They came to preach the gospel. And these missionaries were products of the Enlightenment period. That human reasoning should be brought also to the Bible. Either to we accept whatever the pastor, uh, the, the, the pastor tells us or the church tells us without asking questions. So they came and they propagated the gospel. But when they came, they realized that <laughs> the Africans or Ghanaians, we are also in the same position as they were some years ago. Yeah. So they said, oh, well, let us give them the, uh, the gospel. Let us build schools for them. Let us build uh, hospitals. And if they are social service, because of poverty, that's why they are thinking that way, that uh, spirits are free facing you here and there. The African think that there's a being who created heaven and earth. So we have, and that being does not deal with us directly. He deals with mediums like gods or fetish priests. Intermediaries. Very good. And everything that takes place in this world is caused by spiritual forces. So you don't have any control. So if you want to have control, then you need spiritual power. If you need spiritual power, since you don't have direct dealings with the, uh, God, you, you have to go to the gods, and then you go to Malam. So you go to Malam, and then the Malam will protect you. So if you have that power, then you can control the world. And because of this, we believe that the world that we have been born in is so precarious. It is so difficult world. It's a struggle. It's a war between spirits. It's a war between spirits. And if you want to survive, you need what? More power. So whenever you go and preach anywhere in Ghana and you don't talk about power of the spirit, you won't have any convict. But what kind of gospel did the missionaries bring to the people? The missionaries the say that God created the world. And God created the world. We have Adam and Eve, they sin. And then Jesus came to die to reconcile us to God. So we have not been reconciled to God. We have not been given the Holy Spirit to help us to believe the godly life. 
in addition to that. But was it not the same gospel that they were practicing in the Europe? No, they have revealed their, their, their worldview. They have revealed their worldview. But when they came here, they didn't help us to review our worldview before Adam. That was the mistake they did. They said that, let us give them this gospel. With time, if they get understanding and they, they get out of poverty, they will stop you know, thinking that the spirits are, are the one causing all these problems for them. That is what they left there. So you realize we go to church, and whenever we come home, you realize that we face problems. Then we go to Malam. So every African has two, two places to go. Go to church and go to Malam. Go to church and go to Malam. So that is what's actually, for all these years, for all these hundreds of years, happening and right now, it is happening now. Because the church is not able to address our problems. So they were, they were afraid that if they start the renaissance or the renewal of mind as they have received, Africans will not accept them. So we should present the gospel. But I thought and that the gospel is supposed to bring enlightenment. No. It's light to man. I don't think they were afraid. Just that I want to say it was an error of judgment that they didn't address that problem. They said that when the, your, your, life, no, your life improves, you will stop thinking that it's the spirits that are worrying you. But it's not true. It is not true. People's lives have improved. But they still think that the spirit worries so them. So the African world is only on metaphysics. Metaphysical. And Metaphysical. you are calling that this, that kind of mentality is dynamical to our progress. You will, never, you will never go anywhere. Because you are in nature. And if you are thinking spirit, 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 then go away from nature. <laughs> and because it doesn't work. My studies show that God has created a world that is under pain, weight, laws and principles. So whoever discovered these laws and principles and applied them, you have the consequences of these laws and principles. Whether you are a Jew, a Hebrew, a Christian, or a Buddhist. So that is what we are missing. So <laughs> uh, the African Christian, we are putting in a lot, but we are not having the results we are looking for. Because we are thinking mystically. And then back to the issue, the Bible was written at a time when the people were highly, have the mystically minded. So it was in that environment. And God wanted to speak to them. So God spoke to them by that kind of method for them to hear. So if you want to pick the Bible and those stories and bring it today, you don't contextualize it. You realize that any critically minded person, any scientifically minded person will not listen to you. So the missionary should have helped us yes. to contextualize yes. the message. Yes. And they refused to do that. They did. I'm sure later on, after they had revealed their work, they realized that it was a mistake they did. And that is why we are here now. We have churches, but we are not going anywhere. Young men are praying, but uh, we're not going anywhere. So, okay. So I, I'm still on this issue. So as I was reading, I realized that so they, at a point in time, took action yes. and worked on themselves. Yes. Brought about certain renewal. Because yes. they realized that most of the things that they were saying were not, true. were not true. What is preventing Africans to also dis do the same discovery and say that most of the things that we are seeing now, we can contextualize it and change it. And yet we have decided to hold onto it up to these days. You know, uh, we have to do it ourselves if we, they are not coming to do it for us. But it's very difficult to get somebody who will sit down and steady to renew his mind and lead this change. Because one, the pastors are enjoying from this. The politicians are enjoying from this. So there is no way that they want to sit down freely and allow that these things should be changed. No. If the pastor does not mention that their spirits are following you, how can he get money? If the pastor does not say that I have a dream about you, whatever, how will you? you won't come to him. So because of that, we find ourselves in prison, although the Bible says that we are free. <laughs> so that's what's actually happening. So we need leaders who are, understand this issue, are also selfless, honest, wise, and intelligent to be able to lead us through what I call cultural adjustment program. We need it. We have had, during Kosibuche time, we have Financial sector adjustment program. We need cultural adjustment program. Other than that, we won't go anywhere. 
we will do cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. We won't go anywhere. And who are, and who are those elements, uh, the agents to spearhead this? Well, first, are we are from? talking about those who have power politically to be able to do it. We are also talking about opinion leaders. We are talking about pastors. We are talking about, you know, anybody in a leadership position, parents, teachers, and even our universities. That's where we have to do a lot of work on this. Because <laughs> the wise know this, but they won't help us to reply. The car that we are, runs the world has four, three legs. We have spiritual law, laws of nature, and then human law. But we are working with only one and a half. We are working with spiritual law and the moral law. You won't develop. You won't fornicate. But I tell you, you will marry at the age of 37. Because you don't have any employable skills to offer. Okay. You won't drink. But I tell you, when you are broke, you go to the malam to go and borrow. Like Ghana is borrowing. Whenever you go this way, spiritual, there are certain things that happen. You become what we call miracle-minded. You are always looking for miracle. You are always looking for luck. You are become magically minded. You blame others. You don't take responsibility for life. After all, the belief system is that Things take place because of spiritual forces. So you don't have any role in you your destiny. You don't have control over it. You don't have any control. So you have low locus of control. So you, know, you just give it to God. God should just do you. Yeah, well, that is not what the Bible is saying. But because the African worldview has been mixed with the Bible, we are not getting the gospel. The gospel is the liberation is not coming. And because of that, we blame others. You blame others. We tend to have very high, low IQ. Low IQ in the sense that we make wrong decisions. That's why we have gold. We have uh, what they call rivers. We have every, if God even gives us the whole Ghana is gold, we'll still make losses. We'll never be able to do it. Why? Because we have a, uh, uh, what they call neglected one law. The loss of nature. The loss of nature deals with whatever we are doing on this earth, visible or invisible. We're talking about learning to develop, know the laws, marketing, economics, governance, chemistry, sciences, all of them. We learn them. But the problem is that because we have this mystical mentality, we are born, the culture programmers, we go to school, we learn all of them. We learn all these things, laws of nature, but we can't implement them. We know them, but we can't implement them. What is preventing the implementation? No, the, you, when you know and you can't implement it. No, you know, Paul said that the good that I want to do, I can what? I can't do it. The way is that whatever you process, information that you get and you think about, actually develop what we call a thought. And a thought sits on your mind. And the thought that you think about every day now take strong root. So if any other thought comes in that conflicts with it, it's the old thought that will actually take place. And the thought is that determines your behavior. So can you imagine, I gave an example of, uh, I don't know whether I gave an example over here, where a mechanic wake up in the morning and realized that he wanted to spark, spark his car, and he couldn't spark the car. And then he said, ah, my aunt came to sleep here yesterday night. That's why I can't spark the car. I'm sure he took the car for spiritual expedition. And quickly, can you bring the anointing oil? Let us pray on the car. They pray, they pray, they pray. And then the car was still not parked. You open the bonnet and realize that the terminal of the battery, you know, has what suit on it. It hasn't actually been tightened very well, so you couldn't spark. So you realize that you know all these things, but you can't implement them. Hey, we have a lot of people in politics, in high places. They cannot. I know they can't. They can't. They can't. They can't. Because the moment that you start thinking, Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. You don't give permanence to what you have learned. What you have learned is just something that you just put it on paper. You can't. That's why football, we are not there. Hey, we can't do anything. But you said we need the three laws. We need the three to laws. Move on. But coming to the Europe that, as a case study we're looking at, as we speak now, Apostle Dr. Uh, Kodia did a study about, I think, four or five years ago on the church's growth in Europe. And the findings were very interesting that the churches in Europe are gradually winding down. Yes. Whereas in Africa, yes. it is growing exponentially. Oh. Does it, and yet they are still a developed 
countries. Because when you go there, the environment surroundings, everything is okay. And you are saying they need the three laws. Now they are not using the spiritual law anymore. Combining just the two, and they are still progressing. Why is it that over here that we are even we are combining the three? Because here there are few people who are also you know applying the rules. All right, let me. But the difference between the two scenarios, the European one is is is, is huge. Yes, people you know, don't it seems to be attending church anymore. They don't go to church, but they don't pray like we are doing. They don't go to church, but they are lifestyle. Christianity is a lifestyle. How you behave, they are very honest. I tell you, I was sharing with somebody, I said, look, a conference of uh, pastors, if you like, go and test. A conference of pastors for, you know, spiritual renewal for one week. Go and leave a brand new mobile phone there and tell you that at the end of the day, you'll find that phone. Somebody will open his eye and take the phone and put it in his pocket and continue praying. Oh, it's possible you'll find it. It's yes. possible you'll so find it. So our lifestyle, they are inculcated the Christian values. In their culture, so you are born into it, and then they will never, they won't, don't. On average, most people won't lie. They won't, you know. I mean, people have gone there. No, no, here we don't take, we don't steal. No, people won't lie. But our case, we'll go to church, but we'll do what? We'll We'll lie. lie. So we will steal. So we're living double life. That is it. We have the numbers, but the quality is very low. That is what is actually happening us, and then. People also have their profession. We have pastors who are there. They are having their profession. And then I mean, they are becoming rich. And then we are going to... Meanwhile, we are going down. We started with Korea. We started with Singapore. Where are we? And we go to them to ask them to lend us money. We are not even ashamed. We are, I, I don't know. I'm so much uh, unhappy. So from what angle are we supposed to start this revolution? Where and who are the people to lead the revolution? We have to change the spectacles. Change the spectacles. The way we see the world. Change the spectacles. How we do it. One, you can't use the Bible to rule the earth. No. Bible alone. You can't use the Bible alone. I want to emphasize the Bible is specifically spiritual law and moral law. You can use it to carry out the dominion mandate that was given to us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. You need also the laws of nature. And Jesus showed it in his life. Paul showed it in his life. The question is, why did we miss it? I always, when I discovered this, I said, ah. Okay, so why let, did we miss it? So let's take our time to understand. So what are the laws of nature? The laws How of nature. Did Jesus use it. When we talk about law, a law is a rule of behavior, the way things have to be done. So God created the earth, everything that is within earth, both spiritual and material, visible and invisible. And then underpin them with what? Laws. Who determine how they operate. So when you take a stone. A stone has a law in it that determines how it operates. That's why it's hard. It's harder than anything wood. So water also has a law in it that determines how it behaves. So everything has law. Your body has law that determines how the various parts works. This is what actually we didn't know for all millions of years until the 1500s and the 1700s. So man was searching, searching, searching. And since man discovered it, man has now exploded in knowledge, understanding, has solved many problems. Diseases that were not solved years ago, millions of years ago, leprosy, have been sorted out. Smallpox have been sorted out. Even last I read last uh, year, uh, malaria, yeah, they are working on it. But HIV hasn't. So those are the laws. HIV hasn't. Those are the laws that we learn from school. Economics, how even how to cook. There's a rule the way you do it. So whenever you know those laws and then you apply them, then you progress. Jesus was subjected to the laws. So as long as you are here, you are subjected to the laws of nature, you are subjected to the spiritual law. The laws of nature are implemented by God. They operate whether you like it, whether you know them or not. Jesus had to grow. 
So he was subjected to the laws of nature. He was hungry. He had to sleep. Uh, one particular time, they were going to Galilee. Mm. And that was the time he went to the uh, uh, Jacob's well. And the disciples were asked to go to town and buy food. He gave them money to go and buy food. The question is, why didn't he draw <laughs> food from heaven? He did economics over there. He says, I give unto Caesar what is what? Caesar's. Man shall not live by bread alone. So bread is the laws of nature. And then the spiritual law, the word of God. So Jesus did the balance. Paul said, grace has been given unto me, but I did not work the grace. Why? I work harder than all the apostles. That is it. So that is where we missed. And because we have missed that one in our gospel, it is making us backwards. So it's not appealing. It's not attracting. We are not able to attract people. And even they're coming, their lives do not improve much. They will stop fornicating and drinking. But I tell you, financial wealth, being able to meet the basic needs, they struggle. And that's why they run from place to place because they have been told by the culture they were born in that um, your destiny is determined by the spirits. So they go there to get to ask what the spirit is telling them. So if we don't address this problem, the church is, we are not. And I think I made a suggestion that the church, should, every church should have as one of its tenets that God created an orderly society and underpin it with what? Laws from which he what? Governs. So whenever you get this, then the scientists, the wise people, the intelligent people, all they can now be able to situate their gospel in their context. But right now, whatever we are doing, they can't. COVID came. We prayed and bind COVID. We bind you, bind you. Did COVID die? He didn't die. It was the scientists who came and gave us vaccines to be able to fight it. How do you explain it? How do you explain it? Ebola came. Ebola killed many people who were praying. We prayed, we prayed. But I'm not saying that prayer is not important to Prayer is important because other than that, we are not Christians. But we must know the place of prayer and the praise that we are supposed to work on. So it's very, very important. Whenever we pray very well, we can say, pray, God, give a scientist who can help us to be able to what? Solve this problem. But whenever we sit down there, we have, we have, we have, we, Christianity will, it won't become attractive. It's not attractive. Because it's all no, no. Look at what these people are doing. My survey shows most young guys in Ghana have stopped going to church. I asked one What's guy, he say he attends one church, one big Kashmachi church. Say he hasn't been there for the past six months. I said, why? I, was, oh, I mean, uh, I asked another guy. There were two guys going. I thought they were going to the same place. The other ones, also one big charismatic church, Pentecostal church. Say he has stopped. I gave him a book, and he read the book, and came to me. My Facebook fear, the silent killer. The guy read it and called me. He started crying. He came to my office and started crying. I said, I've wasted my life. And I said, please, it is not your fault. I've spent 27 years to understand this. We are not living a balanced Christian life. Look at pastors who have gone on pension. Look at their lives. Sometimes it's very, very destructive. That's what it's It's our God living. So sometimes they only wait that they will die and go to heaven. But God said that you are supposed to influence the world. We are not able to influence the world because the solutions that the world is looking for, they are not coming from Christians. They are not coming from Christians. They are coming from people. No. So are the doctrines that the church is churning out not enough to rearrange people mm. and get them back to know that mm. it's not only about spiritual issues that can solve, but physical and your strength, yeah. taking action and be more responsible with yourself. The church is, is doing out. something. But I think from what I know, it is highly inadequate. If you're a young man and you don't get it, you waste all your life. You always waste all your life in church. So, so, so if the church is not providing it, then who is going to provide it for us? No, no. That's the question. That is why I'm here. Because your parents may not be able to. A lot of people may be having an opportunity to be listening to you now. No. The, what I'm sharing is just a simple thing that we see around. But we haven't linked it to the gospel. We learn at school. But we haven't linked to the gospel. So as we draw the attention of so who should link it to the gospel? As so that people that congregate will, will have the benefit of We are doing it. How many pastors are listening to us? You'll be preaching last, next week. I'll be preaching somewhere. I'm writing books. You know, so that people become, oh, we have now seen the, 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 
I, we have now gotten the problem. Oh, but you, you know, in churches, if you look at the way the structure works, I mean, some of them purely on doctrinal. And this one may come in as, as a, case, a case in point, actually. Not necessarily the focus of that particular. But do you know many church. heads of churches are, who are listening to us now? They are going to incorporate what we are sharing in their tenants. Because you can't explain it. For example, a pastor is preaching. And as he's preaching, then he falls down and dies. How do you explain it? In the pulpit, in the church, we are praying, yay, 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 they die. How do you explain it? Yeah, if you have some sickness and you're not aware of that it. That is the laws of nature working. And the laws of nature is highly messless unless the maker of the laws want to actually give you mercy and say, Lord, I won't allow it to work. That means we have miracle. So the Lord is merciless. So if you know the laws of nature is merciless, then ensure that locate it so that you don't go against it. But you can't say faith by faith you set aside. You can't set aside the laws of nature unless the maker allows it. That is why the confusion that we find ourselves, the charismatics and the Pentecostals, we are putting in a lot. But the evidence is few. We talk about the evidence. Confirm evidence. They are few. God is still working and performing miracles. But he wants us to look at things differently at this time. Because he deals with us by knowledge. He's revealing himself to us progressively. During the days of the Bible, days, the people were highly metaphysically minded. God couldn't have actually explained to them chemistry, uh, organic bonds, and all these things that we have. No. So God dealt with them. But with time, as we are going on, mm. if you want to stick by that, we are going back. And the principle is that where your mind is, is where you are. So the church, on average, is far away from now, although the body of the church is now. So what is the demand of this time that we are in, this contemporary time? The demand is that we want solutions. We want solutions. We want solutions. If abundant like Jesus promised, where is it? We want to experience it now. That's what we are asking for. But your miracle too will come through where? the quest for <laughs> I didn't hear you well. No, I'm saying that your miracle is, also, is part of it. So it's spiritual part of the issue. No, no. We, are... we have the spiritual laws and then the, na- na- the laws of you nature. See, you see, when you go by, right now we are beggars. Why should you be beggars? Beggars, be- asking China. <laughs> I mean, what is that? China, I mean, so what these people? Asking China. When we have Christ living in us, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple and God living in us. Why is it that we can't produce to give to people, but we are now begging them? This is the challenge that we have. So you're also part of the system. This is what we have started this journey. It's a difficult journey. And sometimes I get discouraged, but that is what we have started. We need to work it on now. Other than that, we don't, the church doesn't have a future. So what specific should the church do in trying to make sure that they bring the members to that standard where we will know that we have our responsibility. This one, you must do it. This one, God will do it. There are principles the church should teach. Foundational principles whenever you become a Christian. Whenever you become a Christian, what has taken place is your spirit that has been born again. Your soul, which is made up of your will, your mind, your emotion, they are not born again. The mental power has not been born again. So you have to take time to renew it. And Paul did it. When you look through the scriptures, that is what is supposed to be done. And we have to teach the members that we have spiritual law. It is, you can't take God out of our lives. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we have laws of nature. You can't take that one out. The third one is that we are responsible to actually rule nature. And that one, we can't take out. And you can't rule nature when you don't know the laws that underpins nature. So this is how the church will teach us. So whenever you go and pray, you pray to God. After you have prayed, you must follow up with what? Laws of nature, your responsibility. Other than that, your prayer is a religious prayer. It won't work. It won't work. I will give one example. We were playing football. I remember those days. 
And Ghana was playing, I think, Cote d'Ivoire. We prayed, hey, we prayed in tongue, that we win the ball, football, the match. We lost. And I was so down. I kept on asking questions. God, why did we prayed? Then at the university, one lecturer said, ah, but the people at the other end too were what? Praying. Praying. So what is the issue? God ensured that the it's laws of all. nature, the laws of nature should work. The team that has quality players, the team that has pre, uh, prepared them, preparation. The preparation with a strategy mm. and all those things, they have to win. That is all. Why should a pastor write exams and fail? And a Muslim and a fetish priest, they write the same exams and pass. It's a loss of nature working. God is not, never partial. He's not partial. He's not partial at all. But we create the impression that God is partial. He'll give you his favor. No. He so, may so, do miracles. So, so God will not favor you because you are a Christian. No, 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 no. At no, the expense no. of somebody who doesn't No, 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 no. Unless you obey the laws. God will favor you. So no. if you're going to write exams and you're a Christian and you have a Muslim friend, mm -hmm. he's also going to take the same exams. And you, a Christian, refuse to take your time and learn. Mm -hmm. The Muslim learn a subject. Mm -hmm. You are not going to pass because you are a Christian. Yes. Because no. miracle will fall. No. You have to put in energy. Yes. You know, whenever you take uh, Israel, a land flowing with milk and what? Honey. But you go there, you won't see the land flowing with milk and honey. It was an arid, semi-arid land. But the Jews had to use their brains. These Jews, they went to school in America. The top schools in America, Harvard, all these guys, they came there and they turned that desert into a paradise. But you think we don't have Harvard graduate and other international scholars in this country and yet the country is a mess? No, we have them, okay. but they have a worldview that is mystical. So whatever they have done, it just won't be used. But they're thinking mystically. That when I go to church and I pray 21 days, God will have favor on me. Wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. So, what exactly must we look at in appointing leaders in Africa? We are looking for leaders who are wise, who are intelligent. We are looking for are knowledgeable and understand what we are discussing now. And, and where do you get it from? Is it by the virtue of the person's eloquence or no. his track record? How do you measure the person? No, the, the person answer is, is in the yes. Bible. The answer is in the Bible. But they are fruit which are what? You know them. But what we are doing is that we elect a thief. We elect somebody who is lazy. We elect somebody who doesn't work well. We elect somebody who has not achieved anything. And when he gets there, then the church will now what? Have all night and pray for him. That God should change him. That's what we are doing now. And, and if you look at our political system too, even the primary, before you can survive, if you don't have enough money, there's no way you go through. People are not looking at your, your knowledge, your track record, whether you'll be able to build factory, whether you'll be able to build a consistent life. No. What? Before people will vote for you because of our, our, our governance structure where you must come from political, you know, democratic institutions, people must come in to vote for you. But before a political party can finally give you the nod, as a flag bearer, you must go through a process. And most of these electoral college members who will give us potential leaders, they don't demand the things you are talking to us about. What they demand is how much will I get? And when that person is settled, because you are here, in primaries you can hear that somebody has even gone to buy a flash screen for almost all the electoral college members. Where did they get the money from? Oh, but maybe he had worked for some time. Where, 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 where? No, he worked. Are where, people, where, no, where? Show me specific. No, but now in Ghana, people have businesses. Where, 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 where business where? Name, name it, name it. You don't see most of these people are unemployed politicians who are very rich. That's all. Unemployed politicians who are very rich. If, you know, we need to talk about this and talk to the people at the grad school and the college people that, please, you are selling your future. This is in the Bible. You are selling your future. Jacob, you know, Isaac, you are selling the future. Don't sell your future. If the guy does not have results to show, but he has been in the party for a long time, or he has provided money for the party, or because he said that half for the... I mean, that's what we are looking for. Then we, the moment we elect him, we shouldn't worry as that we should pray for them. Because it's a waste of time. 
It's a waste of time. Whatever a man, you see, the Bible is so solid that you get most of the answers here. Whatever a man sows, he reaps. So if you are sowing and the person you are going down, you see, there was a story that I, I, I think I, I just read some few days ago. Somebody, a pastor was preaching and saying that, look, you are going to vote. Can you pray that God should let your children be like these politicians you are praying, you are going to vote for? The whole church, everybody was quiet. Nobody wants their children to be like what? The politicians they are going to vote for. Because they know that these politicians, most of them, are not very truthful. And they don't want their children to be like them. But they are going to vote for them. And then come to do all night for them. What kind of life are we? Seems we are joking. But the point is this. We are doing, as part of what we are doing, is trying to educate and empower people. It is up to the people who are watching us, who are listening, to take it and apply it. If they refuse it, you can't force anybody. Well, we, that has been our system. We, we, not we, that people are not teaching. They are teaching. I know some of our pastors. They are doing what? They are empowering people. But people are refusing. No, you see, we have people like uh, Switzerland. Switzerland, they were able to have pastors, Zwingli, you know, Orange. These are guys who came on and understood this and ensured that they implement if you are punished. So we need leaders who will punish us whenever we deviate from this. But the leaders themselves have the virus. So how can they actually take this virus away from us? That's a problem that we have. Hey, in Africa, we can have leaders who are very intelligent, but they are not selfless. We have, they are very intelligent. They have all the degrees from Harvard, but they are not honest. We have them, they are not visionary. They are not firm to be able to punish. So that is a problem that we have now. And the system is not allowing those of you who have that sense to come on board and translate the system. So, so if, what, what would you do? So that is what you we can are transform doing. the system. So they will not allow you, for that, instance, that is what we are to doing get now. into a position where you can instruct, where you can, I mean, formulate policies and laws that will be, you know, applicable to everybody. Where you have the effect that you want. Because this time around, like we are doing here, we are certain all that we are doing is to appeal to people's understanding and conscience to try and apply whatever we are telling them. If they refuse to apply, you cannot do anything. To no, don't But if that. you were to be a, like, let's say, a president of this country, and you are there, and you are making certain declarations and directives, people will comply. They will can get that kind of mass transformation. Well, the mass transformation, I agree with you. But individual because transformation... Of transformation... Yes, the mass transformation, you need a political leader, people with power and resources yes. to be able to do it. That is what Africa doesn't have. In fact, Africa doesn't have. So what can we do to, to get them? Because that is where we can have the effect. Individual, you will try it. But like you said, somewhere, somewhere along the line, the system will suffocate you. You see, let me, let me just... If any government that does not touch the brain, it is not going to work. Transformation of the mind. That is where you start. Paul Kagame. That's where he started from. And right now, he has changed a country that came out of war. And everybody is now making them as an example. The brain change the mind, and when you change the mind, you are changing the worldview. You change the worldview with ensuring that they are punished whenever they don't follow. And before I realize, corruption will be just minimal. But right now, corruption is now over the place. A young man, your classmate, now enter politics. Now, now you have five houses. If you ask him how to work, does he do? He can't tell you. And then we all look on and clap for them. And then we pray. You go to church and pray that God should do what. So, your question, well, I'm not a politician, but I think what I can do, and you myself can do, is what we are doing now, and talking to people. One day, a politician now may be president, or is a president now, who hear it and say, look, we need to tackle the well view, and I must be an example. If you are a leader, you are not an example, it's just a waste of time. It don't work. It don't work. We have tried so many, it doesn't work. Transformation leaders, transformation leaders, they are selfless. They don't want to take anything home. Lee Kuan Yu, three bedroom house for about 20, 30 years, he was there. That is it. That's, it don't work. It don't work. God has an, created an ordered society, universe. Okay, so an individual you can start from. Start yourself. From your own backyard. Yes. And that's begin all. the change with yourself. Begin. Like somebody say, if you are demanding a change, start changing yourself. Yes, so we start so changing yourself. Begin it now. 
let whatever you've learned reflect on yes. the way you be. And we start with the church. The expand church, it to expand. your family. Yes. And then you move into the yes. church and then gradually. Yeah, you, but let me, let me understand, between the time that the church gave into the advancement of knowledge when they were the money in Europe, mm -hmm. how long did it take? And what can we do with this short time that we have? In this country, no, it took a long time because a long time, a long, a long time because from 1500 to about even when uh, this vaccine, uh, cowpox mm. vaccine was, the, the church laughed at the man and said that whenever you take the vaccination, you grow horns like what a cow. It wasn't easy for the, for, for, for the scientists because it was taking the power of the church what away. It took over 300 years. Uh -huh. But we have advantage of history to learn from. Mm. So we can move quickly. Anybody who wants our country to move away. We have a lot of people on the field who have trained, are great, whatever have you. Just let them think scientifically. They will move it. But we have, because of the superstition, we have people who have been trained as science graduates, but they don't think scientifically. Well, we are giving a minute to wrap up with us today and then quickly you can. Yes, uh, the major thing that we have to do is to change our worldview. If you don't change our worldview so that we can see like they see, we are joking. We won't get anywhere. But our worldview includes our belief system, mm. our norms and practices. Mm. Yes. Look, yeah, that's your camera so you can. Yeah. Uh, yes. Our, uh, our beliefs and practices. Mm -hmm. And what you do is what actually the outcome. Mm. So it's very, very important that we, we change our worldview. And the church has to help us to change our worldview. The church is doing its best, but some part of the African worldview has not been touched. They use it to just get evangelism done. But we are still there. And then we are helpless. So it's very, very important that we tackle that area. Mm. And one of the major issues is we believe that our destiny is determined by God. It is not God who determines our destiny. God has given us our will. He has given us the Holy Spirit to help us. So if you are not ready, the Holy Spirit is not what? Ready. So that is it. And we begin, must teach this in church. It will change and the youth will come to church. All right, thank you. That was Elder Doctor Adam Duamua, <laughs> Tax and Audit and Management Consultant. Thank you for coming. God bless you so much for this exposition. Thank you. Very well, much. We'll, we'll continue to follow and learn. And the thing is that don't expect too much from people, but be, expect to change yourself. Begin that little transformation from where you are. And then as you start, and as a doc starts, and those of my guys here are beginning with their life, when there's changes, others will see, and then by extension, will have that larger transformation. Otherwise, it's difficult. But we are praying that the church will rise up and begin to delve into real issues that have bearings to our life. Christianity must be transmitted. It's a way of life. We must live it and produce the results that is needed for societal transformation. That's the only thing that people will see and glorify our God. Good morning. My name is J.B. Danko. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.